I said earlier, I'm gonna do a triple upload, um, I'm gonna play the campaign trail, um, 1860, and before this I looked at a guide on, on Reddit by, uh, the masses, not 1917, I also, he also, I also saw the guide he did for 1796 in one of my earlier videos, uh, so again, thanks to that user for help, um, I just, I just looked at it for a little bit and then played, then I'm gonna play this, so. Yeah, I've, I've done this before, but I just wanna double check, uh, so a we're gonna play as Abraham Lincoln, so Abraham Lincoln runs as the Republican against his rival Stephen A. Douglas. Slavery is the dominant issue, and he has caused two splinter candidates to step forward. Breckenridge, Breckenridge and Bell, both with, with southern roots. Lincoln begins with the lead and must simply hold his northern coalition together to take the victory. The other two, the, or the other three candidates must find some way to prevent a Lincoln victory. In that case, the House of Rep Representatives will choose. Now, what's really kind of stupid, um, you can only select two candidates, but in the 1860 election, there were four candidates. I mean, there were only, there were only two, like, who had national appeal. The others were, like, well, Bell had something, well, no, no, that's wrong. Technically, Douglas was the only one with national appeal. Lincoln had appeal in the north. Breckenridge was in the south, and uh, Bell was in the border states. But yeah, I think I think it would be it would have been cool to just have like added to them. But anyway, it's, this is very easy to win. Anyway, you don't need to like like the earlier uh, campaigns. You don't need to visit anywhere. It's just all about the questions. So you should be fine. So Abraham Lincoln begins the campaign in a strong position. The new Republican Party is largely united. And his advantage in several northern states is overwhelming. The challenge will be to win the closer states like Illinois, New York, and Ohio. To do so, he must finesse several hot issues of the day. Not the least of which is slavery. Other Republican issues such as tariffs, homesteads, and a transcontinental railroad also dominate the discussion. So, oh wait, yeah, you, okay, you got multiple people, okay. Uh, yeah, I always pick, I pick, I pick Hamlin, because, yeah, I feel, I feel picking Clay is not like, yeah, like it's, I'll just go over him individually, so, Hannibal Hamlin is a senator and former governor from Maine and a longtime opponent of slavery. It was this issue that caused him to change allegiance from the Democratic Party in 1856 in the aftermath of the Kansas-Nebraska Kansas Act. Uh, Hamlin will help uh, to balance the ticket regionally and give it name recognition. So yeah, Hamlin was the original choice in 1860. Uh, in 1864, he wasn't renominated because um, in the, when the American Civil War was going on, uh, Lincoln wanted his or the Republicans called themselves the National Union, and they wanted to make themselves appear as, as like they they represented everybody. So they they nominated Andrew Johnson as vice president, and I don't think Hamlin Hamlin wasn't really even even in. He was in contention, but he didn't really care because the vice presidency was a very useless office. But so Cassius Clay's from Kentucky. Uh, he's uh, the anti-slavery publisher from Kentucky. He has faced numerous threats to his life for the views he has taken. He served in the Kentucky House until his views hindered his further political advancement in his home state. He has a wide reputation as an abolitionist publisher and would help burnish the anti-slavery platform of the Republicans. 
Detractors claim that Clay is too extreme and has a limited record in public office. So yeah, Cassius Clay, I think, is the cousin. He's the cousin of Henry Clay. And I don't think it would balance anything. Re Another thing, I, I wouldn't select them is because it wouldn't balance anything regionally. Because, I mean... Well, it sort of would. I mean, I mean, he's from a border state, but, I mean, Kentucky and Illinois are, like, right... Very close to each other. They're both sort of in like the west western part. I don't. Yeah, actually, I think they are right next to each other. If I can, yeah. So I, I I'd pick. I wouldn't pick him. He's also a radical too. But uh, Sam and Chase has served as governor of Ohio. Is influential in the founding of the Republican Party. He has. Worked on the behalf of fugitive slaves as an attorney and a strong anti slavery credentials while stopping just short of a call for outright abolitionism. He is also known to be ambitious and might not might be an uneasy number two man to campaign with. Yes, yeah, so again best one's Hamlin. Yeah, the other the other two got problems. Okay. So when you start, you're I think you're already in the lead. Yeah, you're already winning, so you just hold your lead pretty much. So Yeah, you want to pick the second option. The first one uh I think that that one's good too. Third one's too radical. And the fourth one is too conservative, so way too you don't you do not want to select the fourth one. So do the second one. Uh, yeah, he's good. Um, I can't remember this one. I'll just go to the middle, uh, cause back then candidates didn't really campaign. Well, they didn't. Uh, the presidential ones didn't. But um, yeah, I'll just I'll just make public speeches. Um, yeah, easy target. This one, I can't remember either. Probably failed this, honest. I think the first one's too attacking. I wouldn't... See, I only glanced over that guide. I only glanced over it. So, uh, has a following and so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that really matters anyway. But, uh, you don't want to attack them because they're ex Whigs. So. Um, yeah, you don't want to appease the South. You won't have a chance at winning the South, so. Yeah, support since the beginning. Yeah, we have ours. Proud to have ours. Um... No, I, I wouldn't do the third one. So I think radicals would be turned off.
absolutely not address it, probably. Uh, you know, support the tariff. That's not good. Illinois is going. Yes. Okay, we got it back. Um... Yeah, free, yeah. Yeah, Illinois slipping. A lot. Yeah, you don't want to say, um, you, you don't want to go too, too far with supporting them. Uh, no, don't pick the first one. Um, yeah, say personal liberty. Uh, Germans are a key part of the party. A few, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's driven by slave states. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's important to have you, uh... Yes, yeah, slave. Stop with the slave nation. Uh, I say Ohio, Illinois. So yeah, I mean it's very easy. I hope I hope I'm not eating my word. I hope I'm not. I don't lose immediately after saying that. Like a fluke. I never, I've never lost as Lincoln anyway. I don't. You can, you can, um, you can't outright win as Douglas, but in, uh, I think it's very easy. You can, you can deadlock the Electoral College in Cakewalk as Douglas. Okay. So yeah. Uh so congratulations. You won the 1860 election. Don't celebrate just yet, however. Ward has already arrived at South Carolina. Is planning a secession convention with other states soon to follow. Your presidency will surely be defined on how you deal with this challenge. Will you take a hard line against this action? Seek a compromise amendment to protect slavery or simply allow the states to secede. There are a few good choices for you. I, th I think I actually did worse than Lincoln did originally. So, yeah, that's not good. It makes me look like an idiot. But Anyway... I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. This isn't as good as some of my other guides I did, but um, uh, yeah. I hope anyway, uh, you guys uh 
you can comment or like or subscribe if you want to. And I'll be uploading Sonic 2 in a bit, uh, part 1 of that in a bit. So I'll see you guys later.